to the podcast. My name is Kristen. Hope you're all doing well. Um, yeah, it's been an extremely busy couple of weeks, as always. Um, but even more so last week, uh, we had a very busy week. Um, so uh, I'm just going to jump right into it. <laughs> uh, so we um, had the um, opportunity to be a part of Vera Velamaki and Hoki Hokitelli's um, newest collection called Interpretations, it was volume 5 and that was released last week so we were super duper excited. Um, we had dyed up pre-release yarn kits which sold and then we dyed up a lot of yarn last week for the design. Um, which I'll put a picture in. It's called the Dynamic Trio Shawl and it was designed by Hoki Locatelli. Um, so yeah, it was a really busy week. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about the collaboration process that happened with that design. Um, so we were contacted, or I was contacted by Hoki, um, it was a couple of years ago. So not last year, so it was 2016, I think it was like September, August, around then. Um, so it was quite a long time ago. And she asked if we would be interested and of course we said yes. Um, so we knew that she was thinking of a shawl, a three coloured um, shawl. And um, so she and Vera had put together some mood boards for each of the dyes and they were all uh, secret ones so I couldn't look at, you know, Madeline Tosh's one or um, Walk Collection, like we had our own separate um, boards. And uh, yeah, so it was, our one that we had was uh, filled with lots of um, purples and neutrals, blues, um, that sort of kind of colour uh, color palette. And um, what's really good about mood boards when you're a dyer is that when, when you're working with a designer, they can send you a picture of what they are after, but colour is actually a moody thing too. So Having a mood board was great because I could tell just by looking at the colours that Hockey had chosen that she was sort of after a more spring and summer sort of feel. Um, like her pictures were all light and bright and fun, summery. Um, so I knew that I was sort of looking at that kind of um, colour palette. So I, she had this um, one photo in particular, there was this beautiful uh, kind of watermelony pink and there was another, another photo that had this kind of indigo blue and I loved those colours together. So that's kind of how I um, began and I dyed up the watermelony pink one first. And I wanted it to be more of a tonal, like I didn't want it to be a flat watermelon pink colour. So if you look at the, I don't have the yarns here unfortunately, but if you do look at the colour closely you'll see that there's a cool pink undertone with a warm pink overtone. So it is actually a tonal yarn. It doesn't photograph all that well, it, it's because it's quite a bright colour, it sort of just um, blows out the, um, <laughs> the colour when you, when you take a picture of it. But yeah, so I had that colour, then I had, I dyed up a kind of indigo blue, which you'll see, I'll put a picture in of the actual design, um, Hockey's skirt matches that blue perfectly, it's sort of a bluey purple. And then, um, so I had a, I always think with three colours, when I'm doing, a, um, dyeing up colourway combinations for shawls, and for anything really, when you're using three colours, it's really good to have them contrast, and I always, I, I wrote a blog post about this, but I always use the rule light, bright, and dark. So I had a light colour, which was a, a very pale grey with very um, pale speckles of blue and green. So that's my light. The dark was the um, indigo blue, the indigo purple, purple blue. And then the bright was, of course, the uh, watermelon pink. 
And if you stick by those rules, light, dark, light, dark and bright, you can normally get quite a nice contrast. And of course, you know, I'm contrasting between colours of the pink and the purple. Anyway, um, I thought those colours too suited uh, the mood that Hohi was after, which was a spring summer sort of feel um, and yeah and so yeah I even without knowing what the design was going to be like I'm pretty sure she said look it's probably going to have um, stripes and it's probably going to have lace so anyway I dyed it up I dyed actually a few variations up because I had a lot of trouble trying to get the pinky uh, bright pink color I just kept dying up really flat and I didn't like it so and orange I kept getting this orange pink and that's not what I wanted I wanted the cool undertone with the warm overtone anyway eventually got there um, so yes I, I uh, dyed all the yarn up and, the, and what was really really nice was that Hohi actually came to Australia that year in October and um, myself and Paul who was the other half of Skeen um, went and met her and her husband and her kids and we had the day, um, spent the day with them and I was able to give her the yarn for the design. So yeah, it was great. Um, and then fast forward, say, to last year I think it was, December, um, oh actually it was before then, uh, Hohi actually emailed me with a, with the design actually finished and showing me what it looked like and and of course last week it was released so yeah it was great um, I love working with designers I love collaborating in designs it's so much fun it's really good for me for sort of my creativity um, because it's a challenge you know to actually dye up yarn for someone else um, particularly when they send you mood boards or pictures and you have to come up with a colorway. It's kind of a little bit stressful, but in a good way. It's challenging. Um, so yeah, that was great. And then it's, it's of course fantastic to see it published. And Vera and Hohi have been wonderful because they are actually sending every dyer who participated their own book. So it's great, we'll have that in our collection that we can, yeah, look at and go, yay, that was our yarn. So yeah, that was great. Uh, that was last week. And then, of course, last week we also um, released our new colorways. So this is a autumn and spring. I spoke about it last week, or last podcast. Um, so that's quite a lot of work. Um, I have released a few new colorways, more speckles this time. Last colorway collection I did a lot more semi-solids this collection I've done more speckles nude speckles but I've also gone right back into our archive um, and picked out some really old colorways that I love and most of I actually started when I started dyeing most of the yarns that I started dyeing or most of the colors that I started dyeing were tonal and that was sort of the in thing um, back in 2010 so um, of course we've you know you have your fads and dying evolves and new things happen anyway so it's all been about speckles for the last couple of years but I kind of have this feeling it's going back into tonal again um, anyway I have had a ball dying the tonal yarns up but what's really interesting as well, what made me dye the tonal yarns was also the fact that the weather has been so humid that the dye that I used to speckle <clears throat> has been clumping up and so what I do is when I do my dyeing I lay out all of my dyes first and then I just do the dyeing, like I go through everything and dye everything. So I have all the dyes already mixed and laid out, ready to go. Now in this um, temperature, this climate with the humidity, having the powdered dye out in this humid climate <laughs> means that the dye is actually melting. It's sort of mixing with the air and the air is wet. 
and it's yeah kind of melting the dye so when I actually go to speckle the yarn the dye is clumpy um, which is not good because you end up with big spots of dye on your yarn instead of nice little powdery speckles so yes that's been a real problem and basically the only way I can counteract that is to mix the dye just as I'm about to dye it which is a real hassle because it sort of means that I'm spending more time doling out dye rather than doing it all at once and then getting the dyeing done anyway so just to make life a bit easier I've been um, exploring our tonal um, colorways a lot more than what I have in the last few years and it's been so good I really miss them they're, they're fun to dye um, they look fantastic I actually I have um, a new yarn base that came in uh, it's our Polworth uh, sock and it's um, been spun using 100% um, Polworth from New Zealand and it's using the long fibre of the Polworth so it's not as soft as our regular yarn which is most of our bases are extra fine merino so they're very um, fine fibre this one is a bit coarser and if I didn't know any better I would think that this was BFL that's what it feels like anyway um, so I've been dyeing the tonal uh, colours onto the new Polo sock and I'm really really enjoying it I've I've just had a ball doing it um, I've really missed them <laughs> so I'm going to be doing a lot more tonals um, these are great just knit up in um, jumpers and like big projects because uh, you still you're still having uh, a subtle like almost semi solid color but you've got that undertone of other colors in there but it's just very subtle so yeah um, what was I going to say about this uh, so the the new Polworth has um, a very nice sort of luster. It's got this sheen. It's beautiful. It's been worsted spun. Um, like I said, it, it's very, very similar to um, BFL. It has that feel. And if, if you're wool sensitive, it probably wouldn't be a great yarn for you. Um, but I actually, I really like it. So yeah, uh, thank you to our humid climate. I have been back exploring our tonal colorways and I'm so glad I have because I really miss them. I've also been um, mixing up how I dye the tonals. So usually I have a big pot and I have a very small amount of water in it and I dip the yarn in um, with one color I pull it out, dip the yarn in, put another colour in, like, and I'm sort of pulling the yarn in and out and adding colour as I go. And having not a lot of water in your pot means that the, the yarn itself, when it's, when it's all bunched up, it actually acts as its own resist. So uh, it's only the dye is only going to cover what it can, and then you know whatever is folded up inside the pot the dye doesn't get to and of course when you lift it up it sort of rearranges itself and you push it back in and a new area will get dyed and the other area that's got a bit of dye that'll get a bit of dye on it as well and it'll sort of layer up and yeah so that's how I normally do my um, tonals but I've been um, messing around a bit with my technique and doing something a bit different which I don't know whether I want to reveal Maybe I'll have to think about it. But yes, and it's been um, it's been really good. It's been producing really nice um, tonal yarn, and it's actually a lot easier for me as a dyer because I'm not. I actually get a short, sore shoulder at times. Cause I'm sort of lifting up, putting the yarn in, lifting up, and I do five skeins at a time. So that's uh, 500 grams. <clears throat> so half a kilo. And then if you add water to that, I'm sure that would double to a kilo or probably more. It's bloody heavy. So um, doing this new way, I'm not lifting the yarn up. So it's actually quite nice. 
good for my body. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much the week in the studio. Um, I will eventually get around to taking the camera in and I'll give you a tour. Uh, at the moment it's really messy. <laughs> uh, I just, Paul and I have been so busy, uh, which is fantastic, but we just have not had a chance to um, to clean the studio up. And basically, I don't mean it's dirty, it's just um, there's lots of boxes that need to be um, flattened and taken to the tip and uh, might be a little bit dusty uh, in the office, but um, it's, yeah, probably not presentable just yet. I also wanted to paint the room that I sit in, because uh, it's the room that you walk in, because I was hoping I might be able to do the podcast there. Um, it's actually not as um, noisy for some reason. I don't know what's happened. Um, so yeah, we might think about doing that. Um, the only thing is the light's not great, but I could actually buy some lights. Anyway, it's I'll have to think about it. But this will do for now in my little craft room. Um, so yeah. Uh, so getting into the knitting, I have no sewing this week because I haven't done any sewing. Actually last week with all the humidity and because we were busy and blah 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 blah, I had terrible um, asthma and I actually felt really bad last week. So, which is another downer when you have your own business. The business, having a business is fantastic. Like I thank, you know, the universe for um, allowing us to work and have our own business. It's just fantastic. But when you get sick, you can't, it's not like you can have a sick day. So yes, I've been going in and I've I have not been feeling well. This week I've been fine, but last week my asthma was really bad. And it's weird because every single autumn, as soon as it switches to autumn, um, I, my allergies and my asthma play up. So yes, last week I just had no energy to do anything um, but sit on the couch and knit, which was really nice. So yes, no sewing, so it's all knitting this week. So I'll talk about my works in progress and I'm pretty sure, I'm, I can't remember what I showed you last time with the Chinachita, um, Chinachita top by Lily. Um, I'm pretty sure, I don't think I'd um, separated the sleeves, I can't remember. Anyway, I might be showing you what I showed you last week but anyway. That doesn't matter. I have done a couple of rows, not many. Um, so this is the Chinachita uh, top by Rilili. It is just a cute little um, top-down raglan with this really sweet little um, uh, lace pattern on the sleeves. And it's so enjoyable. Um, the pattern's written so well, there's, I mentioned last time that there's this chart that you use uh, to help you keep track of the sleeve increases and what you're doing because you're sort of doing different increases on different rows and it can be a little bit confusing but with this chart you just mark off what you're doing and it's easy. Um, yeah, it's knitting up really nicely. As you can see, I've separated the sleeves now. And I'm knitting the body and it does have waist uh, decreases so um, yeah it's basically knitting straight until I get to that certain point then I start decreasing and I increase and then the body's done. Uh, it does have um, short sleeves so it's really it's a quick quick knit. Uh, I am using our Skein Sport, which is 100% Merino Superwash. Um, this is the velvet colourway. It's quite, um, of course, purple, um, which I really love. And yeah, it's nice and bright, great for this time of year. Um, and I am alternating skeins. I always alternate skeins. Someone asked, do you alternate skeins when you're doing a short row? No, I don't. I just do the short row with one and then as soon as I finish the short row, I add the second and um, start.
start alternating. And yeah, it's moving up really nicely. I'm really happy with it. Uh, I also cast on for a new design. Um, I had this, I dyed up this yarn a while ago. I was sort of um, experimenting with fade colours. And um, I was trying to put together a collection of three, but using one solid one heavily speckled and then one lightly speckled and it, it it was quite nice but I decided with the shawl that I'm knitting to remove the semi-solid colour and just use the two speckles um, and this shawl has been it's been a bit of a bugger it has um, okay so I started I actually originally wanted to do a lace shawl and I cast on and I was doing garter stitch and uh, I was doing this weird kind of shaping and using stripes with the three different colours and I don't know, it just didn't feel right so I just ripped it out and I started again and I thought okay well I'm just going to do a triangular shawl um, with a nice lace detail. And then I cast on, and then what happened? Something happened. Oh, I kept stuffing up the lace, and I kept having to unpick, and my chart was wrong, and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I sorted it out, but I'm, I think I have frogged this shawl probably about three times. And the yarn was, <clears throat> after the third time, starting to get quite fuzzy. Sorry, my <clears throat> voice is cracking up. Because um, <clears throat> it is a single ply yarn. Yeah, so it is a single ply yarn, so it didn't really quite like being um, uh, frogged and knit and frogged and knit. Anyway, uh, so this is what I have at the moment. This is our Uptown Sock. This colorway is unnamed, but I had this really nice email from this woman who was after a certain color. Anyway, she said that she'd seen this on my Instagram. And she said the colour reminded her of a top that she wore in the 80s to the roller rink. Um, and I just thought that was so sweet. And I thought, oh, that's actually probably a nice name for this, is roller rink. Anyway, I'm, I'm still deciding, but that's definitely high on the list. So, okay, um, simple triangle shawl with um, a nice uh, lace. And then I was, I was trying to decide what I wanted to do, whether I wanted to... Um, attach this, so this is a second skein, um, and as you can see it's got the same colours but it's much lighter than this one. Uh, so I'm going to now attach this colour, and I was going to do a different lace pattern um, as the second um, colour. But I think what I might do is actually go back and do the stockinette stitch. So do a stockinette stitch section, then come back and do another lace panel along the outside, and then I'll do something nice and simple for the border. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that will look good. But if I don't like it, I can always rip it out and start again. <laughs> that's the beauty of knitting. But yes, um, yeah, I'm really liking it. And I really like this lace pattern too. It's, um, I like how it's forming those columns. Uh, it is actually the, I think the lace pattern's called the Little Arrowhead Lace. It's in, um, Barbara Walker's Blue Book, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, really, really enjoying that. And that, I think, is everything. Um, it seems like I haven't um, shown you much, but yeah, like I said, I was sick last week so and busy, so I didn't really have a lot of time to do much. Um, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> and, um, I will be back in another two weeks. It seems to be working well if I do um, every second week. Uh, thanks so much for your um, comments. If you leave a comment on the podcast, um, I always, I love it, I read it, um, and I, I appreciate it. 
Um, so yes, hope you're all well, have a lovely couple of weeks, and I will see you very soon. Bye!